Hello, I wanted to make a, a quick video uh, running through this blog post I just published on how to try uh, NixOS with impermanence on a VM with uh, temp tempfs as root, flakes, and Lux encryption. Uh, the Lux encryption is optional. Um, I'm going to be using NixFlakes uh, because that's just what I've been using for the past three years and I'm lazy. I don't want to show how to do it the, the old way, even though it's still an experimental feature. Uh, if you're new to NixOS, you might be able to follow set, follow this. And uh, I, I tried really hard to make this really easy to follow. Uh, but there are a lot of concepts in the Nix ecosystem. And you may just want to start with NixOS without trying in permanence. Uh, but yeah, so there's this been this blog post a long time, not, well, not how long ago it was, I guess, well, it's been four years ago, but <laughs> it's how long I've been uh, wanting to try this out. It's called Erase Your Darlings. And the idea basically has become known as impermanence, which is, can be summarized as, you know, it keeps your system clean by default. Uh, it forces you to declare settings you want to keep. Uh, it lets you... Uh, Experiment with new software without cluttering up your system. So basically, on reboot, everything gets nuked from orbit, as, as I would like to say, to sort of quote a uh, Aliens movie. Uh, but this means that, you know, you change, you do something in a GUI application that changes a setting somewhere in some file, and you actually care, you want that setting to persist to the next reboot, you have to go find that thing and persist it. Uh, so... You know, this is never going to be, I, I don't think this will ever be like a user friendly, friendly feature. It's kind of a power user feature, but it, it keeps your system in a, um, always new, you know, smell as, 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 a uh, Graham would say. And so, yeah, so let's run through it. There's some things I'm going to do. I'm going to use swap. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm on the fence with swap. So I, if you don't want to use swap, I, I don't blame you. Uh, but yeah, if you don't want to do swap, it should be easy to remove it from the steps. Uh, Lux encryption is optional. You can skip this and everything will keep working. I, I, I put a lot of work into this blog post to make it very easy to like copy paste commands, uh, and, and just follow along, but you should read the code and understand it. So, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, at the end of this, you can very easily find yourself in a system with impermanence, but if you don't understand Nix uh, or impermanence or flakes, you're going to find yourself reading a lot of documentation. That's sort of the uh, rest of the owl uh, thing. So since I'm going to do this in a VM, I want a, uh, a custom uh, ISO of Nix OS. So I'll show you how to do that uh, here. And I even make a repo. So I, I make an example repo on GitHub, uh, which is here. I'll put all this in the description and link, links to the blog post. Uh, but, but basically, it's uh, uh, once you're in the, the repo, uh, you just do next build ISO, and it will build the ISO. And hopefully a little faster than it usually does because I'm uh, I, I changed a setting here to use a faster squash FS compression, and I, I, I notice it's way faster. So your ISO will be under results ISO, and then you need to copy sudo copy that some something like this command right here, and to var lib libvert images. Uh, this is where vert manager. Uh, defaults to looking for images, and there might be a way to, to configure it. Otherwise, I just haven't cared or tried to do so. Uh, but yeah, so once you have that, uh, the hardest part of this whole tutorial would be probably installing Vert Manager, which I'm just going to assume you have installed. <laughs> but one um, one gotcha with Vert Manager is your connection details, virtual networks needs to be running. Otherwise, it just gives you this error that, you know, that there's no virtual network. And I, I set this to auto start on boot, so it's already running. 
And then you can click this icon and you can create a, a virtual machine. So I'm going to select my uh, custom ISO, which is here, and forward. I increase the memory to some arbitrary large number that's within the range of what I have. And uh, just because, and more space, because just because I have a terabyte of space. And uh, then we're off. So, okay. And maybe I'll decrease this. So I'm, I'm, I'm not very much of a YouTuber, so this, may, this probably will not end up being readable on a mobile device. I'm sorry. I will try to increase the size of everything as, I, as much as I can. Um, so at this point, if, you know, as you're going through the tutorial, we're basically at the, uh, partitioning step. And so I like to increase the display settings. And then I'm going to scale the display so that it's easier for you to see. And, uh, in my custom. ISO, I, I use the terminal Alacrity and ZSH, though I have tested all these scripts on Bash, and I've also tested these scripts in, on uh, going through a laptop, like installing on an actual laptop. Um, and and we, what's going to be different if you're installing this on actual hardware is this disk uh, variable, and it, is it needs to be set to something that you look in for LSBLK, and you're going to have, I have a disk, it's called v, you know VDA, which is a virtual virtual uh, SSD or something. So we just copy paste that. And now we're doing the uh, partitioning, copy paste, and, and that's it. <laughs> it's just like that. It's like a bunch of steps that's already done. Uh, there is an assumption here. I'm assuming that one maybe byte or whatever, sector 2048 is uh, where you're gonna need to start for optimal alignment. Uh, I, I, I put a, I buried a section called finding optimal alignment. If this doesn't work for you, um, then go there and you'll have to adjust these numbers a little bit. Um, you can check your alignment with this. It should show that all three partitions are aligned. Uh, this is a script I made to set up some variables for, because uh, it's, well, I go into the reasons here, but I, I realized after I did it on my framework lap laptop, that uh, the way I was doing was it was not going to work. Uh, optionally, you can skip this Lux encryption. You got to type yes in all caps. I'm just going to make the password tester, which is not a password I actually use. Um, so after it will take a second to encrypt it, and then uh, you need to uh, Lux open that partition, uh, which is the root partition. I'm going to name it cryptid and I'm going to, it's going to, when you do that, it will be mapped here. And then I'm going to overwrite the part three, uh, variable to, to the new, where it's mapped to. So you got to type your password and now we're going to format the partitions and this will work if you didn't do encryption. I'm just using ext4 for the root partition after much deliberation. I, I was really considering ButterFS and ZFS, and but it's just a lot of features I really don't need. Uh, so for now, I, I, I think I'm going to try tempfs as root because I have a, a UPS system and stuff. Um, okay, so this these steps are just like to verify, visually verify you know, what's going on, what, where the partitions look like. Uh, and this is going to write out a script to do a bunch of steps that uh, I mostly copy pasted from this blog post on tempfs's root, which is, you should also check that out. It's awesome. Uh, but I did make some modifications. Uh, so this will basically make a file, a file called mount sh, and then you can make it executable and run it. It needs to be run as root. So yeah, you should definitely review this code. Don't just run random stuff off blog posts that you find on the internet. Uh, but yeah, so that, that works. We're gonna turn on swap and generate the, 
the configuration, the hardware configuration and the configuration.next, which is not going to actually be used, but you should look at it and copy in stuff that you want. Uh, we need to make the root file system mode 755, otherwise things go wrong uh, or things will complain. So I made it as you said to do this for you, just copy paste this in. Um, it will format it when next packages. Um, and if you didn't notice in this script, I mounted boot as emacs 0077, which means something like root can only read and write. Uh, uh, only root can do that. Otherwise, somewhere a step down here, system D will complain that you have a world readable security hole. Uh, and then when you, you, you mount it, like you generate the hardware config, it's, it's still, uh, it doesn't pick up that permission, the option for boot. So right here, this said thing will basically put that new mask in there. So I'm going to copy paste that. Oops. I didn't mean to do that twice. I wanted to show that it, it worked and it's funny that because I did it twice, it's actually messed up. So now I gotta, <laughs> I, I gotta fix that. Okay. Uh, so that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen for you. But yeah, so, okay, so now we're going to encrypt swap. And there, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I made the script, I realized uh, I wanted to use this, this option that ran, uses random encryption key on every boot to encrypt swap instead of using Lux. But that means that the, the by the, uh, this, I can't see my mouse. Okay, so the, the by hyphen UUID gets changed on every boot. This means that needs to change. So that's this script does all the work for you. Uh, and so now it's by part UUID and this is the, the actual UUID that you need to use. And then I add this random encryption dot enable equals true. So now your swap is encrypted. Uh, yeah, talk about flakes a little bit and uh, this is where I bring in a configuration that I, a uh, starter configuration example, uh, which, oh, I have it down here. So I use this template uh, called starter configs, which people seem to use. I use the minimal one and I made a, a repo based on that and then but one of the, the differences is that I, I wanted Home Manager to be a NixOS module so that when I do rebuild switch, it will bring in the, the changes that whatever happened in home.nix or, or you configure through Home Manager, it, it ha applies at the same time that you rebuild your switch system so that you don't have to do anything extra with uh, impermanence to, to get those system uh, stuff to persist. Or, or have to run Home Manager's standalone CLI tool every time you boot up. Um, but yeah, so that's what I just, I clone that, I, I moved my hardware config into the repo. Um, I changed directory and did get at. So uh, it needs to be staged for Nixflakes to actually realize that it's there. Otherwise the next step will not work. Um, the install step. So install uh, this sets up next config and en enables flakes and stuff as an experimental feature so that you can do Nix, Nix OS install this flake. So I'm going to do that while it's installing. I just mentioned that Blitzar is a uh, something that you can change. It's just a something I something I found on Wikipedia hypothetical type of neutron star. Oh, that was cool. Um, if you go into the starter config, you can see that it's defined here. Um, so it's, it's defined in flake.nix and under configuration.nix, it's, it's the host name. So you, if you want to change it, you need to replace it in these two places. Uh, yeah, so I'll do that. 
if I can paste. Okay, so it, I'll fix that and reboot. And then booting into the actual thing. Here's a Lux uh, encryption password. And then the password for this user is temp uh, space B. I have that in the readme of the starter config. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna change the resolution. And apply it. This is one of those things, you know, like it's this is actually modifying a a file. And uh, uh, starter. I made a I made a file called persist.nix, uh, and this is where I had to add. So I realized that under the local share case screen and uh, needed to be persisted and system settings start RC. Part of the one of the ways I found this was uh, using rep grep, doing something like 2048 hidden, and I realized that oh, because that's the resolution 2048 by something, and then I was like oh, it's there's it's written to this file here, and over here, so I should persist that if I actually want to boot back up. So that's why that's why this is here. So this. This is kind of maybe the headache that you'll find yourself in if you're, as you're setting up your system, especially for the first time. There's going to be settings that you realize that need to be persisted if you wanted to, uh, you know, save it when you boot reboot. So it may not be the best workflow, especially for somebody who is doesn't like rebooting their system or shutting it down at the end of the day or something. Uh, but let's just do a little demo here. Uh, so I'm going to touch a file in the home directory. I'm going to touch it. Uh, and the downloads uh, directory. And because, because downloads is set as a directory to persist, this will be written uh, into the Nix persist home will. Uh, you see that it's right there. But because this is not persisted, the home directory, when I reboot, it will just be gone. And I've got a super big mouse. Uh, and, and now you, you can see that I don't have a Oh, my mouse is freaking out uh, there. But yeah, so now I only have the high text, you know, under downloads. So um, that's basically it. That's that's impermanence in a nutshell. Uh, you have to opt into state uh, and your, your system remains clean by default. Uh, but, you know, notice like all these, all these directories and stuff, uh, if you, Uh, you see, like these directories are persisted, but but because I'm using uh, KDE Plasma, uh, just in this example, like when you boot up, it sets all this up if it doesn't exist, uh, and you'll find a lot of stuff like that. Uh, there's a bunch of files that get created, you know, if they don't exist. Uh, but yeah, so I guess that's it. I don't know what else to say. Oh, I, I will say this. There is a little uh, bug, I guess, but it's kind of a benign issue. When you shut down a restart, um, you'll get you'll see an error flash. Um, you can actually see it if you say sudo halt. And it's this error right here. It says failed to unmount Nix. So as far as I can tell, and this even happens after it dumps the journal CTL logs, so you won't see it in the logs like when you come back up. But uh, as far as I can tell, this is not causing an issue, but it is a little annoying seeing this red thing flash up on the screen as stuff is scrolling by. So, uh, so yeah, if you want, uh, go to next community uh, persistence and and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe maybe it needs to be fixed in, in, actual, in the next OS repository or something. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.